Hello guys, it's been a while since I've done a Laravel Junior code review on this channel, which used to be a pretty popular format series of videos. And today I will take the example code of someone just starting with Laravel and I will show you four things that I would personally improve in her code. So she recently posted this tweet, which went pretty viral with 600 likes at the moment, sharing her YouTube video of eight minutes, quickly running through her first project in Laravel. And I gladly retweeted that as endorsement of public start and got this comment. When will you refactor her code? So I decided to took this kind of challenge and that's why today we're having this code review instead of usual Friday videos from my car, which we'll get back next week. In general, Leah as a personality is such a great example of someone starting with something new, Laravel and PHP for her. She's coming from Node.js and React background, if I understand correctly, and she's also a math teacher. So here's her tweet from Laracon US, and we should all learn from her. The courage and the openness of building in public knowing that her code isn't perfect. So kind of a disclaimer, this video is not to react on Leah's code and kind of roast it, but I noticed a few things pretty typical for new Laravel developers. So for someone just starting with the framework, I think these pieces of advice will be useful in general. So first about the project, it's an eight minute video, which I will share in the description below, so you should watch it. But in general, it's a math problem project, a quiz of doing plus and minus operations, which looks something like this. So Laravel Breeze with React on top. The main model, the problem, the eloquent model looks like this, which looks okay. But then Leah is showing the controller, which looks like this. Problem controller with static function generate problem with the purpose of generating a database record with addition or subtraction operation, which are the methods inside of the model. And here in the controller, I see a few things to improve. So thing number one is the method itself. Usually, typically, controller is not the place to, well, place that method. Controllers are typically for public methods like index, like store, like update, and route resource is a typical example of a controller. So public methods related to some route. In this case, I was watching the video and I was thinking, how will she use that method? Will there be some kind of route or API endpoint or something like that? And then later in the video, I saw a problem seeder with the factory. And inside of that factory, we have controller called to generate a problem. So this is my first advice that controller should not be used for that. Instead, what I would do is create that generate problem method in the model itself. So currently in the model of problem, we have addition and subtraction as methods. So I would continue that path and generate problem method would be inside of the model itself. Because now it's kind of too long. Factory calls the controller and controller calls the model methods. It's also debatable whether that code should be in the model itself. It could be a separate kind of a service class, it's called, like problem service with all those methods, but those methods in the model is also a typical okay practice. My second piece of advice, and again, it's not a criticism of Leah's code, it's just advice for everyone based on this code, is to use collections instead of arrays. And this is another example of, in general, adopting new framework or new language. And quite often, you don't know the best practices or the typical ways how things are done in that framework. So Laravel is full of collection methods, which are kind of arrays on steroids, so to speak, which typically make your code more elegant. In many cases, it's a personal preference. So array methods are fine. But in this case, I think it's an overkill to convert to array, then shuffle the result and then slicing 10 records. And it could be improved on two levels. First level is not convert to array if you have some kind of similar operation. So instead of to array and shuffle, collections have a method of shuffle and then you can chain another method of slicing instead of doing array slice collections also have a method of slice so the overall code would be something like problem all chained shuffle chained slice with parameters so that's level one but then level two is to not do those operations in collections or in php in general instead use the database so that is my tip number three, which is a pretty typical scenario in Junior's code because you don't see that as an error. You do 
all, you do all last and it works. But it may cause very big performance problems if your database grows. So what happens here, you're getting all the problems from the database and then perform some collection operations. What if you have 1 million problems in your database, but you actually need only 10? Then that million would be downloaded into your RAM, into memory, which will pollute the memory and cause your server to crash. You basically will run out of memory. Similar thing is down below, quiz all last. Again, we need only last quiz, but we're downloading all of them. Instead, it should be quiz latest first or quiz order by ID descending first. And in here, instead of problem, all it should be problem order by random and then take 10 or limit 10 and then get. So that would turn into one SQL query returning only the results that you need. Not all of the database, but only 10 results in this case, or only one result in that case. And I'm thinking, question to you, is there a tool or some method that would detect that automatically? There are detectors for N plus one query problem, for example, which is in core Laravel as well, or with external packages. But is there any tool to detect that you're downloading too much data into memory with these examples? Let's discuss in the comments if you have some ideas how to implement that. Maybe I should make a pull request to Laravel to do something like that. Let's discuss. And then final tip number four I would like to give based on this code is I saw that Leo was doing PHP Artisan migrate refresh to reseed the database. And this is not exactly a bad thing, but I would like to emphasize two different commands, which is migrate refresh and migrate fresh. Migrate refresh will execute the rollback methods, the down methods in all of your migrations, which means rolling back migrations here, as you can see, and then remigrate again. So you rely on down methods to exist, to be successful and not cause any conflicts. If you want to just wipe the database and start fresh without relying on down methods, because maybe you don't have them, then if we take a look at the documentation, there's refresh, but there's migrate fresh. It will just drop all the tables. Refresh will roll back and remigrate. There's also migrate reset, which would just roll back, but I don't remember using that myself personally. So yeah, this is my quick code review, or maybe not so quick, which is ironically probably longer than Leah's video herself, which is eight minutes. I'm not sure what this video will become after editing, but it may be longer with all my explanations. Maybe it's too long. Share in the comments below what do you think. And yeah, I will repeat myself. I think Leah is a great example that we can learn from to not be afraid to get outside of the comfort zone, learn something, learn in public, share the code, share the video, share the opinions, because so many people are afraid to start, especially start in public, which means that she now has an advantage of myself reviewing her code, a lot of people in the comments noticing her, helping her. So my overall advice to you is to not be afraid to start something new and go in public with that. In fact, I will do it myself. I have a few topics planned for the videos to try something new, some new tools, new frameworks, new approaches with the idea that I've tried something new and maybe you will give me some advice in the comments whether I'm right or wrong. So subscribe to the channel to get all those videos in the future. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.